Hey everyone, Kelly Dean Allen here once again. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to play In the Dark by one Mr. Billy Squire. Just a killer track from his 1981 album, Don't Say No. But before we do, I just have to say, God damn, why did that guy have to go and make that god-awful, ill-advised video for his song Rock Me Tonight back in 1984, a video that practically tanked his career overnight. Uh, such a shame, really. He most certainly didn't deserve that fate. Uh, he was far too talented to be just disregarded from the mainstream airwaves because of one silly, misguided MTV video. Now, some will say that the video was only part of Billy's decline in popularities as the 80s progressed. However, there were no legitimate signs whatsoever really, that this was an artist about to go into a decline in popularity. He was riding extremely high at this point in time, and then that video came out, and suddenly people stopped buying his albums, and he suddenly couldn't sell concert tickets either. Uh, it was not coincidental, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, like I said, a damn shame, really. Uh, regardless, let's close in, learn how to play the fantastic rocker from Don't Say No and In the Dark by Mr. Billy Squire. All right then, Billy Squire and In the Dark. We are in standard tuning for this tutorial. Lots of guitars going on at the beginning of this one. Three that I can count. One of them playing the main riff four times. All double stops on the A and the D string, starting with a double stop on the twos. We're going to go two, four, two, four. Then you're going to take that 4, slide it into 5, slide it back to 4, off to 2, off to open A, open D, back on to 2 again. Then you're going to grab a couple of quick chugs of the open palm muted E string and then grab that 2 again on the upstroke. You really want to catch that final one on the upstroke because you, you really want to hear that note, that E note there on the second fret of the D string, right? So that's the opening riff. Now, after you repeat it twice, another guitar joins playing basically the same thing but with octaves. And then dropping into an E power chord here on the 2 of the D and the 4 of the G, right? So the octaves muting the D string in between 2 and 4 of the A and the G. Just back and forth, move it up two spots, move it back, move it back to 4 and 6, right? Slide it into 5, back to 4, back to 2. And then just drop into an E power chord and repeat that twice. And over top of all of that, these unison bends going on here on the 12 of the high E15 of the B. Right, full step bend, lots of vibrato. Every time the main riff starts again, you're going to grab that unison bend. Let it ring, right? And then we drop into the first verse. So the first verse is going to be a C power chord, lightly chugged for four bars. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we're into this. Just double stops on the nines and sevens of the D and the G. A couple of quick open E's, palm muted first. Catch that double stop on the nine uh, twice, and then off to seven. And repeat. Right, and over top of that is a little fill line. Right there, 14th fret of the G string, little bend release off to 12, back to 14. Down to the 12 of the B, roll it up to the 12 of the G, double hit on the 14 of the D into the second half of the verse, back into C for four bars, and then back into the double stops on the nines and sevens. However, at this point, we're gonna hang on the nines the second time, not go off to seven, because we're leading into the pre-chorus. Right? Now, we're jumping into the pre-chorus, we're going to move into a D chord here, freeing up the high E string initially. We're only going to strum the D, G, and B string, a little down, up, down. And then you're going to drop your middle finger onto the two of the high E, right into a full D. Kind of like that, right? Then you're going to drop into a G chord, hit it twice. Ba, ba, da, 
and then back to D. And then you're going to do a little back and forth between that D and that G about four times. <laughs> back to G one final time and then we're going to drop into the chorus. And then right back into another verse. So we're back in C again for the chorus, a bar and a half, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then we're going to play that little lick right there, grabbing the five of the uh, D string, sliding it into seven, and making a full uh, bar here, a D major triad on the seventh fret. And then just ride up the B, G, and D string, right? Back to C, bar and a half, repeat that. And then move into E for a bar and a half. And then back to that again, right? And then we drop back into C again for the next verse. That chorus is abbreviated. It's about half as long as the next two choruses. And then we're back into the double stops. Right, for two repeats. Another little fill line over top of that. A little bit different than the first one. Right there, 14 of the G. Another little bend release off the 12, back to 14. Down to the 12 of the B, back to the 14 of the G. And then just a little uh, one trill, you know, between 12 and 14. And then 14 off to 12 of the D. Right, back into the second half of the verse. Four more bars of C. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Double stops. Hang on the nines. Into the pre chorus. Chorus, twice as long this time, into E, back to C, start the chorus again, back to C, play that lick again, back to E, now we're just going to hang in E. And then we're into the main riff again, which we're going to repeat six times. with these unison bends on top of it again, right? And then we drop into the solos. Solo's pretty easy, it goes something like this. And then you just kind of tremolo pick a palm muted low E string for two bars, right, before dropping back into C for the next verse. All of it going on here on the G string, right? But we're hybrid picking along with the high E string. So we're going to hit that 9 of the G three times, slide it back to 7, hit that three times, slide it back to 5. Getting that nice dissonance, right? Then we're going to slide back into 9, pick it three times, and then we're going to go 9, 11, 12, sliding back to 11, and then 9, 11, 12 again. Right, kind of like that. And then get tremolo, pick the low E string, palm muted for two full bars. And then back into C for the final verse. Four bars. And then back into the double stops. And then another fill going on over those double stops again, a little bit different than the other ones right there. So a little double stop here on the 8 of the B and the 7 of the high E. Hit it twice. Pull off a 9 off to 7 of the G and grab the 9 of the D. Then you're going to slide that 9 back to 7 off to 5. Grab the 7 of the G, slide it into 9. Right back into C for the final verse. Four bars. And then back into the double stops again. Hanging on the nines, right? And then we're into the final pre-chorus. Into the final chorus. 
bass. Play that little slidey lick. And then again, into E, back to C, again, and one final time. And then finally, drop into E, let it ring, end of track. That is how you play In the Dark by Billy Squire. Certainly hope you enjoyed that, found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button right down there. Maybe drop me a subscribe as well if you haven't done that already. Hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.